almost forgot. Did you, did you see our worship banner was even dancing as that was going on? It is worship month at Oakland Church, uh, a time of year when uh, we really want to give God his worth. We want to focus on him despite the things happening in our lives because he is worthy. So let's just resolve to do that, to, uh, to show up on time, prepared, and uh, and we're going to worship well this month. So I'm so glad you're here. I greet you in Christ's name. I'm uh, Pastor Dave, lead pastor of Oakland Church. And I want to remind us that worship isn't just what we do for about 15 minutes following the announcements. Um, last Sunday, as 10 of you got up and gave glory to God for what he's doing in your lives, that was worship. And as we pray, as we acknowledge our desperate need for God's help, that's worship. So uh, I hope our understanding of worship continues to grow, and it's going to be a great month. So I, I greet you in Christ's name. If you are new to us, I encourage you to grab a Connect card from the seat, or if you're on our website or, or watching our live stream, go to our website, and you can fill out this form. Let us know who you are, and if you have any prayer requests, we'd, we'd love to pray for you. Well, I've decided to share the wealth. Uh, someone suggested that you get tired of hearing me. So I'm, I'm inviting a, a couple friends to come up and help us get into our worship service this morning. So come on up and tell us who you are. Good morning. I'm Christina. I'm Brittany Root. And uh, we're going to start this morning with a psalm. Psalms 96, 1 through 4 and 11 through 13. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea roar in all its fullness, let the field be joyful and all that is in it, then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth, and he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for every person gathered here today to worship you. You have blessed us with the supportive community of believers to help us bear our burdens and to hold us accountable as we seek to live a life that honors you. Father, we thank you for being here in our midst. Let your presence be made known. As we sing your praises today and hear your word, let us rejoice in your goodness and in your grace. To you be the glory. Amen. Um, there are four ways you can give to Oakland. You can drop it in the offering box over there, and there's one over there. Or you can text to give, uh, or you can send a letter <laughs> or a check. <laughs> And then there is <laughs> there is a call for I don't know <laughs> uh, there is retrieve me or revive me uh, on November twelfth at six thirty and on November thirteenth at one and it's free and it is free and then Christmas crafts are November thirteenth uh, you do need to RSVP for that by three p.m. on November tenth thank you. Encourage him this morning. Great job, guys. I appreciate that. God's good. Amen? Amen. It is good to be in his house this morning. Let's stand and confess that together as we uh, sing his praises. Christ has died, and Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Amen.
But he rose up from that grave My God still rolled his stones away Let's remember together. We were the beggars, but now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, but now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. So let the house of the Lord sing free. Together, we were the beggars. I'm not dead, you're not done. Oh, if I 
I'm not dead, and you're not done. Greater things, greater things I see to come. Oh, I believe I'm not dead, and you're not done. Greater things I see to come. Oh, I believe I'm not dead, and you're not done. Greater things I see to come. So I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Yes, I do. And I see this is my testimony from death to life. And grace, you wrote my story. So I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I am justified. This is my testimony. I'm alive. This is my testimony. From death to life. This grace is your own my story. So I'm going to testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Yes, it is my testimony. Hey. That I'm alive, He's turning my life up. Every day it is my testimony. Amen. Yes, Lord, we testify this morning. You've turned our lives around.
my chains and set me free. Hallelujah. To the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to the Lamb upon the throne, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. God, would you just invade this space this morning with your spirit? We need another fresh touch from you today. Lord, we need what you have. So we come as your humble servants, Lord, and we just gather together and sing your praises and acknowledge who you are, the God and creator of the universe, who knit our hearts together before we were even known, Lord. You knew us in our innermost beings. So we turn that back to you this morning in praise and adoration. Lord, receive it. May it bless your heart. And in these times, we, we bring those items that we have in our lives that might be weighing us down, but we're just going to set those at your feet this morning, Lord, and acknowledge that you are the one, the answer for us. So if you're either sad or maybe with a burden this morning that you'd like to bring to the altar, perhaps a loved one you want to intercede um, for, or uh, perhaps just praise the Lord um, on your knees this morning, we're going to open the altars as we sing the chorus one more time and then pastor will lead us in prayer. Sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. Jesus Christ, my living hope, God, you are my living hope. You may be seen. It is good to worship you, God, to remember who you are. You are immense and beautiful, all-knowing, all-powerful, and when we worship you, we do gain perspective on our problems, but they're real to us, God. They, 
they at times threaten our joy. So help us, Lord, hear the prayers of these who are kneeling and everyone who's come with a need today and go, on, go into action on behalf of your children, O oh God. Um, we, we do trust you with these situations. We, we know you care. We pray for um, intervention and healing and help, Lord. You're already helping Dave. Thank you for um, being with him during this difficult week as he's fought the virus. And think things look pretty bleak for a while, but we prayed and you have, you've been helping him, Lord. Continue to heal him. Got a few more days in the hospital. Just encourage him, meet his needs, Lord. Um, restore his health, we pray. We lift our brother Oscar to you, uh, who's also been hospitalized and needs your touch, Lord, on his lungs, on his kidneys, God, um, just be near to him and uh, encourage Lisa and the kids today, Lord, give them that peace that passes understanding. God, continue to touch Tori. Um, thank you that he's feeling a little better. He's got a long way to go. Give him patience, God. Uh, give him relief from his pain. We pray when he visits his doctor this Friday, he'll get to go ahead to begin physical therapy, Lord. We, we want him back, God. Um, but we know you're with him. And Emily, just uh, meet their needs during this time. We'll touch Cleo as she undergoes a heart procedure this week. Just uh, bring healing to her body and continue to be with others, Lord, who feel poorly, poorly God, or just deal with um, chronic illness. Um, we look to you as our healer, as our great physician. And hear the prayers for all sorts of needs, Lord. There are a couple of people who are facing some job challenges unless you intervene, God. Just give them peace, Lord. Meet their needs today. And bless marriages and parents, Lord. And be with our kids. We thank you for Eric and those who are serving them in this hour, teaching them who you are and what you can do in their lives. Just bless them, Lord. Be with our little ones in the nursery today. We just celebrate each child in each person here in this space and watching on our live stream, God, I, I ask that you would minister to those who are worshiping at home. May they know that they're not forgotten. Give them hope that someday they'll be able to resume life as it used to be, God, and in the waiting, so may they press into you. God, be with our nation, Lord, just always new challenges facing our leaders and people. We pray that you will bless this land, that you will lead our leaders, and that you'll remind uh, our veterans that they're not forgotten, God. Um, meet their needs, Lord. There, there's a lot of challenges facing them. So help them, Lord. And may we continue to support them for their service and their love. God, we thank you for this time, and we just commit the remainder of the service to you. Speak to us, God, and change us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to know, I see you. 
paying for your coffee every morning, wearing that hat that tells me the infantry you dedicated your life to before I was even born. You may not know it, but I watch you with great admiration and thank you for what you sacrificed. I see you in your full active duty uniform, walking through the store with your family. And I wonder how long you're here for, when you might have to go. I look at all of you and think, you must be some of the strongest people in the world. I see you on the TV. You're not just a face in the crowd of soldiers on the news. You're a person with a family who loves you, walking the dusty earth far away so that I can walk in peace where I am. I see you at the memorial. You're not just a name, I know. You left a footprint of freedom on this earth, imprints and sacrifices that are not just remembered, they're cherished. I want you to know I see you. I haven't forgotten you. I admire you. I pray for you, all of you. God bless you and your families. Well, I'm not preaching a Veterans Day sermon, but we don't want to let these moments pass by without honoring our veterans. So if you have served in our armed forces or our uh, police department or fire department, would you stand and let us honor you? We also have a little gift for you today. So would please stand, those who've been in the armed forces or, um, again, army or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, police department or fire department. And who's passing out the, the gifts? I guess it's my wife. <laughs> it's a devotional book. And, uh, and a candy bar, so uh, it's not too big, so hopefully it won't get you in trouble. But uh, all right, so you got to keep standing. And thank you for your service. We, we hold you in high regard. I do have a, uh, a hypothetical question for you and for us. What if... You hadn't been successful in your endeavors, and maybe our Vietnam vets feel that way, uh, although we, we do honor all of you. But what if uh, the enemy had won on foreign lands and had invaded and conquered our nation? Such a thing as foxhole religion, you know, where... When bullets are whizzing by your head, it's, it's a little easier to, you know, pray and get closer to God. But what if we had lost the wars and lost our nation? Would we still love God? Would we still worship him? That's the situation Habakkuk was facing. He's the first, what I call, weird worshiper we're going to look at this month. And I think it's a pretty timely sermon because life's been hard in the last year or two or ten. And we've got to praise God anyway. We've got to find a way to give God his worth even when we're disappointed or distressed. So let's look at uh, this short Old Testament book, Habakkuk. Chapter 1, and uh, we're going to just read a few verses at the beginning, but refer to the whole book. So I invite you to stand for the reading of the word. Habakkuk chapter 1, one of the minor prophets. This is the message that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere, I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law, and he's talking about the Mosaic law, has become paralyzed. 
and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. And it gets better from here, but this is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. So I would imagine that all of you have heard of Habakkuk, even those who maybe grew up in church. We don't talk about him very often. He, uh, he was a prophet of God, a man um, chosen by God to speak for God, typically to the people. And he was facing some, uh, some real challenges, some difficult times, which is why God raised up the prophets. Pretty much from the time of King Solomon on, God called men to, uh, to help speak his word to the people, to get them back on the right track. These were difficult times. There was an enemy looming large. The Assyrian Empire had recently conquered half of God's chosen people, the northern kingdom of Israel. And they looked pretty scary. I mean, the, the remaining Jews, the southern kingdom, Judah, was no match for them. But that wasn't the biggest threat in the nation of Israel. Sin was rampant. We've read, and, and that's what some of the commentators suggest is happening here at the beginning of, beginning of Habakkuk. He's, he's lamenting what's happening in his nation among the people of God. There's violence, evil deeds, people arguing and fighting, unjust judges, neglect of the scriptures, the, the law of Moses back in his day. But this just sounds way too familiar, doesn't it? I mean, these are difficult days, and Habakkuk is, is crying out to God, which is always a good thing to do, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised God doesn't just say to Habakkuk, the prophet, you're a prophet. Do something about it. You know, I, I've called you to take a stand for what's right, to speak the truth to my people, to help get them back in the right the right track, but, but that's not what's going to happen here. And, you know, we, we just have this snapshot of Habakkuk's life, but he doesn't preach to the people. God's solution to the problem of sin among his people was Judgment. He's about to bring a plague, economic, uh, you know, economic failure, natural disaster. Oh, no, that's our country. No, I'm, I'm kidding. He's going to unleash the Babylonians. They weren't even in power yet. They don't come on the scene for a few decades, but that's the, the, the prophetic word from the Lord, I am raising up the Babylonians in verse 6. And uh, Habakkuk's like, wait, did you say the Babylonians? I mean, I know we deserve judgment. We are behaving badly. You know, just spank us and send us to our room. But the Babylonians are a cruel and violent people. Habakkuk questions God's fairness. They're way worse than we are, he, he cries, and in, this letter, in this book, complains to God that it just isn't fair. I mean, how can you use this immoral, ungodly, violent, cruel people to, to discipline us, to bring judgment on us? We're better than they are. Did you know God doesn't grade on a curve? Like, just because your good is better than someone else's good doesn't mean you're good, right? We're graded on God's curve in light of his holiness, his righteousness. 
This was earth shattering to Habakkuk. It, it raises one of those big scary questions of fairness. You know, how can, how can the innocent, or why do the innocent suffer at the hands of sinners or evil people? Why do bad things happen to good people, although God's people weren't so good right now? These are the questions that cause a lot of people to dismiss God and Christianity and, and probably get to us at times. God, if you're good, why is this happening? If you love me, how can you allow this? And God's next answer brings some comfort to Habakkuk. God will eventually bring justice to the Babylonians. That plus plus was to be an anima animation. We'll, we'll get there. So, so God, who, who's outside of time and sees the future, is going to raise up the Babylonians to punish his people, and eventually the Babylonians are going to be punished for their cruelty, their wickedness. Just, justice will happen in his day and in our day. Justice will prevail. I've read to the end, end of the book, God will defeat all enemies. He will make things right. There will be an accounting for all of us. And, you know, in Bible times, that was, that was good news. Sounds a little scary to me. But we'll get back to that. So God will eventually bring justice. Just hang tight, Habakkuk, because things are going to work out. So, hey, that's great. Yay, God, question mark. The nation's still crumbling. The innocent are still suffering. And, and that sometimes includes our children. I mean, the thought that one day justice will prevail, that the kingdom of God will, you know, be unleashed on the earth, it doesn't help us that much right now when life is so hard, when our nation is in such chaos. So what does Habakkuk do? Do you know what he does? He quits. No. He complains. He curses. He worships. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. That's just weird, right? He's, he's weird. It doesn't make any sense. The nation's going down at the hands of, of wicked people, and Habakkuk worships. I know what you're thinking. Why would he do that? <laughs> How's that possible when life isn't going well, when nations struggling, when my family's struggling, when I don't feel good, when I don't know if I'm going to have a job tomorrow, how do you expect me to worship? And as I shared in my email, I need this stuff too. There's at least four things, you know, I, um, Real challenges in my life, body blows, I'm calling it. I'm sure you're curious, none of your business. No, I, I'll probably share some of that this month, but worship when life is hard, when we're disappointed. So this is what, I think this is how, this is the how of Habakkuk, and I hope it can help us. He, he anticipates future judgment. For, for him, that, that's helpful to, you know, his ability to worship. He, he believes in the justice of God, that in the end, you know, sinners will be judged. No one gets away with anything. <laughs> the people of God saw that as good news. 
And this meant something different to him, but I think this is why. Because his God offers salvation. At the end of the book, he, he's joyful in the God of, of his salvation. The God who saves through animal sacrifices, through the Mosaic law, somehow that was enough, but only because one day Jesus would come. One day the perfect sacrifice would be made. One day the wrath of God that we all deserve could be you know, assuaged because of Jesus. We will be saved, we who trust in Jesus. Even though all hell may break loose at some point, we will be saved if we have trusted in Christ. It helps me worship knowing, you know, we win in the end. Like we will reign with Christ someday. It's good news, isn't it, Jerry? Maybe the closer you get to that day, the better the news seems to get when you're like 12. It's like, well, how does that help me? But life is short. Eternity is long. You got to live with that reality. And this is a, a similar point, but he trusts in God's sovereignty. You know what that means? God is in charge. His plan will prevail. There's no question about what's going to happen on the earth. It's, it's in the book. And I don't know what that exactly looks like. It's apocalyptic. It's figurative. But, but I know in the end, you know, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus will be crowned king and I don't quite believe that, you know, God is a micromanager. He's moving every piece. Every little thing that happens is the will of God. You know, I, I, don't, I don't quite believe that. But, but God's plan for creation, for his people, for, for us will happen. Take it to the bank. We can trust him. He's... He's large and in charge. <laughs> Reading my devotional book this week, and, and it was very timely. There are Christians who have hysterical reactions. This is a Jesuit, a Jesuit father writing. As if the world would have slipped out of God's hands. They act violently as if they were risking everything. But we believe in history. The world is not a roll of dice going toward chaos. A new world has begun to happen since Christ has risen. Jesus Christ, we rejoice in your definitive triumph with our bodies still in breach and our souls in tension. We cry out our first hurrah till eternity unfolds itself. Your sorrow now has passed. Your enemies have failed. You are a definitive smile for humankind. What matter the weight now for us? Sounds like Yoda a little. We accept the struggle and not, and not, we accept the struggle and the death because you, our love, will not die. We march behind you on the road to the future. You are with us and you are our immortality. Take away the sadness from our faces. We are not in a game of chance. You have the last word. Beyond the crushing of our bones now has begun the eternal alleluia. From the thousand openings of our wounded bodies and souls, there now arises a triumphal song. So teach us to give voice to your new life throughout all the world because you dry the tears from the eyes of the oppressed forever and death will disappear. Written by um, a Jesuit father who was assassinated um, 
shortly thereafter. It's <laughs> a good word. So it's kind of, you know, the big picture. We win in the end. We have this hope in earthen vessels. <laughs> but there's a couple more things that I think help Habakkuk worship. He remembers God's amazing works. Chapter 3, Habakkuk says, I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. He, he remembered the stories of the Exodus. God brought his people out of Egypt with his strong right hand. He, he brought them through the wilderness and across the Jordan River and into the the land he prepared. He, he drove out the enemies. And this God is still capable of moving on behalf of his people. He's still the same God. He hasn't changed. Nothing is too hard for him. Habakkuk says, I have heard these stories. So in this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. He doesn't just accept the way things are. He says, God, would you, would you change what's happening here? He, he prays. He prays. We can pray. It not only will help us get to worship it is worship when we acknowledge who God is and what he can do we are giving him his worth that's why I, I wish you'd come and pray with us you know because because I think that glorifies God as much as anything we do He remembers who God is and calls out to him. And one final thing. I, I actually think this is going to be a short sermon today. But don't hold your breath. Uh, there's no four, but this is four. He experiences God's presence. The creator of the star, the one who breathed out stars, shows up and talks with Habakkuk. They, they have a dialogue. This, this whole book is just a conversation between a man <laughs> and God. God's listening. He's responding. He shows up. Dialogues with him strengthens Habakkuk, gives him the peace it passes understanding. It doesn't make sense. The nation's still going down. <laughs> but God is near. And he says, even though the fig tree, fig trees have no blossom and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty. I mean, it's, it's bad. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Though I am but dust, I pray, before God standing, not asking pleasure's way, nor gold demanding, but greater things I ask from God requesting, no less that he give to me, that I may live life everlasting. My heart now overflows. With prayers and praises, my heavenly Father knows each sign that raises my heart ever near his heart so tender, for there's my joy and peace. In thee I found release, my soul's defender.
I know I've shared this dozens of times over the years, but when we said goodbye to our first daughter, born, um, stillborn, God showed up, and that was enough. He is near to the brokenhearted, he promises. If we seek him with all our hearts, we will find him. When life isn't working out like you hoped it would, that Apply to anyone but me right now. Anyone else can relate? Five. All right. Well, remember that God is large and in charge. And cry out to him. Maybe that's all you can do right now. But that honors him. And seek his presence. So God, that's what we're doing in these moments. In this month, Lord. um, Because it's not just me and six other people, Lord. um, This feels like in the last couple years, maybe coinciding with the pandemic. Life's gotten harder. We don't know who to believe, Lord, (laughs) other than you. Our hope is not safe in the hands of politicians, no matter what (laughs) their, uh, their party. We have been lied to and and disillusioned and it's I think at times robbed us of joy and peace and it's gotten in the way of our worship we're just being honest about these things God and and bringing them to you because you're big enough to hear our complaints and you know our pain And God, if if all you do this month is show up, if you just draw near to us, you still are raging hearts, Lord. I talk to people who don't sleep well. We need you, God. We need right perspective and peace. So meet us today at the table, Lord, with this reminder that God is with us. Christ has come. He he promises to be with us always. And God, we know that in our heads, but we pray we will experience you in our hearts. Feed us bread of heaven until we want no more. Christ's name. Amen. I always forget to pass out the gluten-free options. Oh, have you got one already? All right. Is anyone else? I know Zach and Heather. And uh, if you need gluten-free, it's, it's up here. Uh, the rest of you can reach into the seats, the cup holders in front of you, and Hold the elements for moments. Let's reflect on why we take the Lord's Supper monthly here at Oakland. The communion supper instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a sacrament which proclaims his life, his suffering, his sacrificial death and resurrection, and the hope of his coming again. It shows forth the Lord's death until his return. The supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. It is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. 
Let me read that first line again. This supper, this sacrament is a means of grace in which Christ is present. He is with us. Those who have repented of their sins and believed in Christ for salvation are invited to partake in the death and resurrection of Christ. We come to the table that we may be made one and may be renewed in life and salvation. So God, we pray that you will consecrate these elements, that they don't change in anything supernatural, but they become means by which you help us, you encourage us, you draw near to us. We commit the morsel of bread and the sip of juice to you. We remember the great sacrifice that Jesus made for us in the home he's preparing for us, the table that will be spread around your throne someday. We know your grace is enough to get us from here to there, but may we... <laughs> Journey through this life with thanksgiving and praise because you are God and you are good. We love you and pray in Christ's name. Amen. So, can remove the clear plastic or I guess got some print on it and reveal the wafer. Take this and let us Take together the body of our Lord broken for you. May it preserve you blameless under everlasting life. Now carefully peel back the foil, maybe only part way. And let us take together the symbol of the blood of our Lord shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of what Christ has done and be thankful. Ushers are going to collect the elements if you want to hold them. I don't know if you know that chorus. The words will be on the screen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let's try that again. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Please try to ignore the fact that I spilled some juice on myself and the floor. Now the live stream audience knows that too. All right, well, it's going to be a good month. Uh, I just encourage you to, uh, to come prepared to worship. You're welcome to join us. We're start, we started meeting at 9 o'clock for, for pre-service prayer. Great way to prepare our hearts and to usher in the Lord's presence. We, we really need him to move in our midst. Announcements were made, but don't forget about the offering on your way out. Continue to put God first with your money. And journey groups, um, right after service, they're meeting all over the place, upstairs. Uh, I had been leading one, but um, I get to teach the teens again today. So uh, if, if you don't have a journey group, um, talk to uh, one of our greeters, and they'll 
get you settled in. I, I think good things, I'm hearing good stories about what's happening as we go deeper, as we try and apply what, what God is saying to us in our lives. So we grapple with, with tough questions that may need a little more processing. So why don't you stand and, and let me dismiss you as, as you go. May the Lord bless you, keep you, and make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you his peace. Amen. You are dismissed.